The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared. For at an unknown hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward, whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom the master on his arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him with the place, a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating shall only be beaten lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. I was coming home from going to confession the other day, and on the way home from the church where I went, there was a roundabout about three blocks from the church, and as I was navigating the roundabout, there was a car steadily approaching the entrance in between where I got on and where I wanted to get off, and the rules of the road are that that car is supposed to yield. Whoever's in the roundabout, of course, has the right of way. But rather than yield and stop, the car sped up and, and managed to navigate its way right in front of me as if he was trying to exit pit, uh, pit road and beat the pace car so he wouldn't lose a lap. It was a little scary, a little dangerous, and I had a few choice words. <laughs> I made it a minute and 20 seconds from confession. It's in moments like those, we really do wonder sometimes, why? Is it worth it? Wouldn't it be easier to not care? 
Wouldn't it be easier to not worry about what God might be thinking, to not worry about the care or concern of another, to not be charitable? Wouldn't life be easier if we weren't called to care for the poor, to think of others, to be generous in our life, to be self-sacrificial? And the truth of the matter is, friends, yes, it would in many times be easier. We live the life of faith not because it's convenient, but precisely because it's inconvenient. Our relationship with God is inconvenient because it oftentimes calls us to do things that we would rather not do. It would be much easier for us to live our life and not worry about those who have less than us or those who are marginalized or those who are oppressed. It would be much easier to think only of ourselves and to cast everyone off in judgment or whatever. Our life is not convenient. Our life of faith is frankly inconvenient because it calls us to stop any number of times and check ourselves when we would much rather be doing something else, when we oftentimes are inclined to do something else. So every now and then we ask ourselves, why? Why is it worth it? Why do we bother? Why do we take on the inconvenience of being a Christian? And the response is simple. The response comes in our second reading. The response is faith. We take on the inconvenience of being a Christian because we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have faith that our God has entered our world and taken on our flesh and allowed himself to be nailed to the cross for our sake so that he might give us eternal life, so that he might give us salvation. It's our faith in that promise, our trust in that goodness, that allows us to live the life that God calls us to live, because it reminds us that it's worth it. It reminds us that we seek an end greater than our own, and that end is promised to us in the death and resurrection of Jesus. That eternal life and salvation is promised to us by the goodness of the Lord. And because God has been generous to us, because God has sacrificed himself for us, because God loves us and has mercy upon us more than anyone else, it's our faith in that promise that allows us to do the same that allows us to take on the inconvenience of the Christian life. Because it reminds us that those inconveniences shape us into something greater than ourselves. It shapes us into saints. It shapes us into the people that God calls us to be. It's not easy. It requires daily attention. It requires daily trust. It requires being vigilant, as we hear in today's gospel reading. But it's that vigilance to the daily stuff of life, to the daily stuff of faith, that allows us to enter into God's life, that allows us to share in his promise and be assured of his salvation. It's waking up each and every day and asking ourselves how it is the Lord is calling us to serve him, and being kind to a coworker or family member, and being a little bit more generous to someone that's easily ignored, to be attentive to the plight of a people that we would normally not think of. It's all those little things each and every day that God calls us to. It's that daily attentiveness, that daily vigilance to the life of faith that allows us to share in God's life, that allows us to share in the life of the resurrection. That's not easy. It's not easy at all. And so God gives us his very self. He gives us himself here at the Eucharist. He gives, him, he gives himself to us in prayer to remind us of just how special that relationship is. To 
to remind us of the product of faith, to remind us of his promise. The more and more we trust in his promise, the more and more we have faith in his goodness, in his power to save, in his power to redeem the world, in his love and mercy and generosity, the more and more we're able to find it within ourselves to be and share those same things to one another. And so as we gather for Eucharist this morning, as we gather to receive the very body and blood and soul and divinity of our God, may we simply ask that he nourish us and feed us and sustain us in the life of faith. That he gives us the courage to wake up each day and to ask ourselves how we might serve him and to seek to be faithful to him in all things, large and small.